Hello everybody, welcome to Graceful Embroidery. Today I'm going to play with a design and I'm going to give it a very different treatment to what I've ever done before. Here you can see on my uh, machine I've hooped up some heat away stabiliser, hence the shininess. I've not used this before, it's made by Floriani. The underneath is very rough and apparently that's meant to go at the bottom and that's meant to help um, with the stitch out. Onto this one layer of uh, wash away, uh, heat away stabiliser, I have laid a nice um, antique cream silk dupion. I've popped on my into my machine. Let's have a look at it. Whoops. This um, this design from the Graced in Petals uh, collection. Let's just pinch the screen in so that it the whole thing shows up. Uh, it's probably not very clear, but it's got it's got scallops along here and at the bottom. And what we're going to do is we're going to test out a theory that I talked about a little while ago. Is it possible to give, um, to get a scalloped edge cut and embroidered out nicely, even though it's not been prepared for that? In other words, we stitch it out, we trim around the edges, and then we do the satin scallops again. So this is what we're going to be doing today with this Grace in Petals design. And I've chosen the antique silk because I'm going to give the whole design a really antique look with creams and I'm not going to do the greens and the bright colours that are normally in the Graced in Petals designs. So let's go ahead and stitch this out. So obviously the first thing I need to do is to do the box of basting stitches because I've not hooped the silk. The silk has been attached to the wash away. You can tell I don't use this very often because I keep calling it wash away. The silk has been um, attached to the heat away stabiliser with a little bit of temporary adhesive and the two things seem to go together all right. I was a little bit apprehensive about doing that. So let's, um, to hold this in place before we stitch out, let's put a box of basting stitches all around the design making sure before we start that everything is um, smooth. There are a few puckers down here and those puckers were on the stabiliser and obviously is it, because it's heat away I can't iron them out so that's an experiment in itself to see what happens. So, so there we have our box and one thing about these basting box boxes when you're using silk dupion which has got all these slubs and very obvious lines on it you can check your alignment um, and it is important that it's not crooked because obviously if you've got oops lines on the embroidery that it's going to uh, going to shout this wasn't laying uh, straight but that looks that box looks quite nice and the first stitch out we're going to do is the scallops I'll be back when they're done I've done the first stitch out which you can see is four scallops here and this band of scallops at the top and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it off the hoop and I'm going to trim round the top of this one and round the top of these four and obviously I don't want to trim that one because I'm, I'm creating an antique sort of insert or um, border um, so it's just round the top here and round here and I notice with the stitch out these stitch first and then it does this bit and then I'll obviously when I do the second stitch I shall stop here um, and then move on to the others so this has got to be removed from the hoop and with careful um, cutting I've got to cut around inside but obviously I must leave the stabiliser underneath intact. Here we are with the design on my craft table 
and I'm going to do my trimming. Now I'm going to I think I'll start with this this top bit and obviously you've got to get inside the fabric and sometimes I think it's easier just to do your first cut with a stitch ripper or at least make a hole. These are my embroidery um, scissors because they've got a little curve I find that's quite good to um, and they are my sharper scissors. Now obviously along here I've got the box of basting stitches and they're almost in the way. So one of the first things I've realised was it probably would have been a good idea to have made the basting box bigger because on my machine I can choose to baste around the design or around the hoop. I'm doing this in such a way it looks terribly awkward but I'm obviously I'm at a slight angle. Now it occurs to me as I'm doing this that it doesn't really matter too much if I snip the satin stitches because these are really only a guideline because this particular um, design has not been digitised to be given this scalloped edging look. It's quite difficult on this little narrow bit here not to cut the uh, stabiliser. Let's have a look, let's turn it over and see how I'm doing. Yes, it all seems to be okay. I'm going to lift that up for the camera and let it uh, focus on there. I've trimmed all along here and I was aware in a couple of places that I probably um, snipped the the line of stitches which is going around the box of basting stitches but I don't think that is a big problem if at this point when I put it back on the hoop I could always do the basting box that goes around the hoop as opposed to around the design to strengthen everything before any more embroidery is done I've made a little hole here Now if you did if you did inadvertently cut the uh, the stabilizer it's not the end of the world because you can do repairs and if I've done that then I shall show you how to make the do the repairs but I'll do them anyway I've done all my trimming and the only place I've cut it is here um, so to make a repair I'm just going to cut off one of these corner bits here I'm going to move the hoop out of the way um, that's the rough edge the rough edge goes there so with the flat edge up I'm going to put just a tiny bit of adhesive on there and just lay that over the area where I've made a cutting by in error and that floating underneath always works the only thing you'll be aware of is when you push it back on the hoop that you don't knock it off but uh, it's not usually an issue this is how it all looks this side um, and obviously we've got to trim away some of the fabric we don't want to leave it right here on the edge because it will get caught in the scallops I've tidied that up as best I can um, and tried to make sure that there are no silk strands in the way um, for the stitch out. The cutting of these is a little bit fiddly and it's a bit daunting actually cutting into your embroidery because it looks ghastly but um, don't worry I'm going to take this back to the machine now I'm going to, cut, um, going to embroider these scallops again and we'll see what happens. We're back here on the embroidery unit and I've brushed and blown away all the little fragments of the uh, silk and obviously I need to take my machine 
back a colour. But we're not going to stitch the whole thing. So this bit um, is obviously, uh, I've got to be uh, watching the cat, watching the, uh, the camera and the machine so that it stops and doesn't redo these bits. Although I may decide that it needs to do them on reflection because they'd be, this upper bit would be more dense than that. So let's see what happens. Here we're coming to the end of the scallop and uh, although threads are being caught I've not moved the fabric away too much but I don't think that's going to be an issue because the threads should just pull out or be very carefully trimmed. So this is the final scallop at the top and then it's going to go over the other scallops which I think is a good idea um, because they'll lack the density of these ones that we've just stitched. So we'll stitch those and then we'll have a good look at the result. I've taken it off the hoop and as I look at it here I must say that it's all gone very well. It was obviously necessary to do this, uh, to re-embroider those scallops this side because they're, they're quite pronounced. They've got a lovely look to them. Um, no, I, I'm really pleased with that. So I can go ahead now and and I can uh, do the main embroidery. Now, the gray stem petals, um, now the gray stem petals collection has yellows and several shades of green and gold and blue, but I'm going to keep this in a different color scheme. I'm going to only use neutral colors I'll probably use an off-white and a few other ivories um, just to give a very different look. Um, an antique look basically is what I'm looking for and I'll probably use this colour again which was 508 sand I believe. It was either that or 520 bone but I'll, I'll let you know later on in the video. So let's pop this back on the machine. Before we do, I'm just going to show you the underneath. Um, no, I'm I'm really pleased with that. And it's obvious that you can go over scallops a second time, providing they're not too dense, and these look good. The main thing to look out for is that the scallops meet and there isn't a gap between them. Not every scallop design in the graced in petals collection will be able to be given this treatment but let's stitch out the rest of the embroidery and then we'll briefly discuss what we would do with a design like that like this one hello again i've completed the embroidery and as you can see it here um, i am really pleased with this the colors all worked out perfectly i did check and this is 508 sand 
I've also used, um, we're talking sulky rayon threads here. Sorry, I didn't make that clear before. I've used 1082, which is the ecru, and also 520, which is bone. There's probably not an awful lot of difference in these colours, but if you stitch the whole design out in one colour, it'd be very bland. And these very subtle um, changes in colours are are really important in making a, a design look good. I've used 1071, which is an off-white, for the flowers and also for these buttonholes up here. And this here, I didn't quite know which what to use for this one, but I actually used my one and only Robson Anton um, thread, um, which is called can't remember let me just check I used this Robson Robson Anton as you can see I have to get some more I love this color and I can't find anything quite comparable in the sulky rayon um, colors probably the nearest is cream um, 1022 but this is eggshell and it's a delightful color I can never have enough ivories like creams and and off whites and there's nothing more satisfying for me than blending them all together like I've done in this embroidery and there you see it um, and I think we did the right thing um, both these scallops look the same so What do we do next? Well, we take it out of the hoop and then we'll do some trimming away and uh, tidy it all up. And then I have to turn my iron on and iron off this heat away stabilizer. I must admit, I've never used a film like this before. I had a big bolt of sulky heat away, but it was more of a it was almost like a rough canvas. It was definitely fabric. It was quite, um, quite harsh, um, and I, and it just made a terrible mess. And I, I'm not really looking forward to do it you know, to um, ironing this one out. But uh, let's see how we go. Right. I went through my scissors to see which ones I were going to use. I didn't know I had so many. I've got these pretty ones, but. They're not really very good. They're only decorative. Um, these are the duck build applique ones. Um, and then I've got curved, two types of curved ones. These are probably my best three scissors. Um, you go through scissors and then you find something else. And anyway, I digress. I've also, I'm going to, when it's all nicely ironed out, all the stabilizers, I had a quick look at my hot fix pearls. This is these are the white ones and these are the cream ones which are absolutely gorgeous. Two cuts, two sizes here, and I'm definitely going to put some of those somewhere on this panel. We also need to cut the buttonholes and find some ribbon and thread that through. So I'll put those in that tray and put that aside for now. Um I do apologise for my dirty uh hoop which needs cleaning the baby wipes or wipes will have to come out and I'll rub that down and make that nice again first of all we just need to cut off all the surplus now you can see it's a little bit sticky here where it was um, where I used the spray on adhesive I do keep some of my um, trimmed stabilizers but they usually all bulk up and in the end they all get thrown away but you may want to keep some of yours um, I have successfully joined stabilizers providing their overlap sufficiently you can put two pe long pieces and overlap them and uh, use them like that this is down here we have our little repair and that worked very nicely off. Oh, it looks smaller already. 
this was fun to do. I, I, although it was a bit of a challenge, especially um, making it, uh, sharing it with you all. Um, but I've long wanted to do a little bit more experimentation with heat away because I, be, the majority of my embroidery is done on silk dupion because I just love silk and I just love all the colours that are available. Hundreds of colours and shades it and it it works well and it photographs well which is why I like to use it for my embroidery for the photographs that I put on my website now I'm going to trim away all these jump stitches and then come back I've done a lot of trimming I've cut away most of the long jump stitches on the back and this opens up the embroidery so that I can tear away the excess um, stabiliser. Obviously we don't want to put the iron over this with, with all this on here and uh, it, it, this is the area that I repaired and it, it, I pulled off the top layer, it came off away quite easily. Here we've got just take you in a bit further so you can see. We've got a th few threads that have got caught of the silk in, in the scallops, but they, they, they can be trimmed away um, carefully and probably tied, uh, tied it up even more when the, uh, when the stabiliser is, is removed. Just remember to always have a little bit of fray check on hand if, in case you do snip something which you shouldn't. So I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll cut this bit off here that's floating about. We definitely don't need that silk anymore. Oh, that looks better already, doesn't it? Just put that up there so you can see. Right, so I've just got to do a little bit more tidying up. And then I'm going to get hold of the silk. And I always use my seam rip. Seam rippers are great things. They, they, uh, they're great for getting into things. And as you can see, it rips away very nicely. Now I did watch a very interesting um, video about removing excess stabiliser with a tennis ball. But I haven't got a tennis ball wrapped up with, I forget what they wrapped around it, but it, it easily removed the little bits of uh, stabiliser from the top of designs that had been uh, stitched on fabric with a, a nap and this is this sort of stabilizer can be used for that but as you can see it's pulling away quite nicely and when I've pulled all of it away I'll come back and we'll get the iron out hello I've um, spent a long time trimming the uh, embroidery and I just as I was doing that, it occurred to me that some people may think that's an awful lot of effort. But the days, the days of being able to go to a shop and have multiple choices of lace and uh, fabrics are over. And the beautiful thing about this is that you can actually create your own uh, customised panel. You choose the fabric, you choose the threads the colours um, and it is worth the effort. Now I made a few blunders on this definitely. Um, I've, um, you'll notice that this top edge here I've snipped the, um, snipped the satin stitches which is rather careless of me um, and, and that's all because I had bits of fabric, uh, bits of silk sticking out because I made a mistake in the first place. When you're doing this sort of embroidery where you're trimming away, do the basting box around the inside of the hoop, not around the design. Then you've got a lot more room to move things out of the way. The scallops at the bottom here have turned out beautifully. And, and in, in all honesty, I've pulled away nearly all of the heat away stabiliser. I left it here on this, on this one here and I've just ironed it. Now my iron 
is right on the um, on the border between silk and linen and cotton. I mean, obviously, silk can't withstand so many hot temperatures, so you've got to be very careful. But it seems to have um, seems to have come out quite well. Let's go on to this one. I checked the website for removing this and they suggest you go backwards and forwards and it's meant to take the stabiliser and make it into little baubles um, but because of the colours we've got here it's quite hard to see them but that's them there quite coarse and of course one way to get rid of them is just to give it a little bit of a rub and so that they they fall away you've just got to be careful how you're positioning the iron over your embroidery now this is quite an open design so you can you can take time to uh, do different sections at a time whoops my water nearly went flying then that funny noise is my iron it it jumps up it's it's a, an Elysio. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. It's a beautiful iron. It's the nicest iron I've ever had. As soon as I put it down, it it lifts up. Because I'm terrible at leaving the iron on. So if the iron will turn itself off, then I'm then I'm well away. So backwards and forwards. And I don't think those of you who know me would be surprised to to hear that. I like my iron to be a nice colour, so it blends with everything else in my embroidery studio. Now that's coming away nicely. The other thing I'm just a little bit concerned about was, did I need two layers? I've got a tiny amount of puckering here, but I'm not, I've not really given it a real hard um, press yet. I've just got to remove the... The stabilizer from this section here. It's quite satisfying actually. You rub your finger over and you can feel it. Now that hasn't that hasn't done it yet. That wasn't sufficient. As you see, it's it's right here on on cotton. I, I'm going to turn it up just a tiny bit. And I haven't got this I don't think there's any uh, I haven't got the steam on. You see, that's a. Those are the bits coming off, and it didn't come off that one. So it's got to be. I've turned it up just a little bit, and that seems to be doing it just a little bit better. Now, I invested, I'm always on the lookout for new notions, I invested in this seam ripper because I was, t I read somewhere, I, I'm always watching videos on machine embroidery, that you can use the rubber end of this particular one and it will pull away tiny little bits of, um, of your stabiliser. It's such a bright afternoon, I've got the blinds closed, so it's very hard to see what I'm doing, whether it's actually pulling anything away. Now you see, when you feel with your fingers, I can feel that there's quite a bit of stabiliser still on that one. Give it a rub and then you rub your fingers over and you see, look, there's a, there's a blob of um, glue and there's bits round the curve of this bit here but be very careful don't pull them in case you start pulling the stitches so it is quite a lot of work I think it's all off this bit up here and I haven't really done the um let's attack these let's put that in front of the camera Now I use, um, I tend to use Sulky or Floriani stabilizers. Um, and I know that Sulky do a, 
they do a heat away stabiliser. So I must try it and compare the two. Um, yeah, you've just got to you've just got to apply enough heat so that you haven't got these baubles of glue sticking to your embroidery. So it's a little bit of um, work involved. Now I'm going to give this a really hard press and try and get rid of some of these puckers. This is in fact an endless embroidery design. Now if you're not familiar with that um, term, it means that you can stitch it out once and then move the fabric along and stitch another one, another design this side. Now if you notice this flower here is not here and that's the reason because this design comes over here and sits on this one. I'm pleased with that. What would I use it for? Well I'm sure you've all been asking that and I've been given that a lot of thought over the last few days. I think I think it would make beautiful edging to a crib blanket. I mean, obviously, if you edited out this, that is would make a gorgeous edging to a christening gown. I mean, these colours are just absolutely gorgeous. Um, no, there, there's... Uh, and I mean, obviously, this edging would look lovely on the end of a sleeve. Um across a bag no it is it is it's 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 turned out exactly what I had in mind when I when I looked into this and I would uh, now these are the slightly larger pearls I tend to always think old oh, pearls need to go in the centre of flowers, but that's not always the case. Sometimes when they're just positioned in a certain place in a design, they make the design pop even more. There you see I'm putting them into the into the scallop edging. They could go on this flower. You could eliminate the the embroidery for the for that flower, but there's no reason why you can't just stick the pearls over it. These are the tiny ones. I can't remember what size are they. They could be ten SSs. I get all my um, pearls from Dawn. At uh, she has crystals and all sorts of, uh... there we are, look. Look how those beautiful those are. If you went to the shop and bought something like this, it would cost a fortune. And it really would. And it may not be in the colours that you want it to be. Now what I tend to do is I position all the pearls exactly where I want them to be. And then I turn my hotfix gun on and... Uh, hold it over them so that it melts the glue and they are attached or you could just put them around these little flowers on the on the edges there <laughs> 